is Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. Now, Channel 11 News starts with breaking news. Yes, breaking right now in Westmoreland County. Police say a woman was killed when she was hit by a FedEx truck. Yeah, she was pinned under the truck and witnesses rushed to rescue her. Channel 11's Melanie Marcelco joins us live in Ligonier with the breaking details. Melanie. Well, Joe, I can tell you right now that Route 711 here in Ligonier Borough is back open. It just reopened within the last 10 minutes. But at this point, Ligonier Borough, or Ligonier Valley Police, rather, are calling this a tragic accident. They say, uh, we just got an update from them. They say this 54 year old woman was just dropping off two little kids at the Covenant Preschool here, right behind us. As she was walking away, she was hit by a FedEx truck and pinned beneath it. We just got an update again from Ligonier Valley Police. They tell us 54 year old Pamela Barker of New Florence was hit and trapped beneath that FedEx truck. Police just made notification to her family. This happened right at the intersection here in front of the YMCA on Route 711 in Ligonier Borough. And police tell us passerbys and the public works director actually jumped in and tried to help rescue this woman from beneath the truck by using a bobcat to try and lift the truck up to free her, but they couldn't. It is a tough day for first responders and witnesses here. We did everything we could to try to get, to get her free. And uh, it was an unfortunate accident with a very bad ending. And police tell us that that investigation is still ongoing. They said they're pulling video from nearby businesses to see exactly what happened at that intersection. But at this point, they're calling it an unfortunate and tragic accident, and they do not believe the truck driver is at fault at this point. Reporting live in Ligonier, I'm Melanie Marcelco for Channel 11 News. And as you heard, the investigation is still developing. We're going to be working through the afternoon to learn more about the victim in this accident. And you can look for new information starting at 5 on Channel 11 News tonight. Meanwhile, breaking right now at noon, part of Pittsburgh's Shenley Park is shut down right now after a dump truck carrying asphalt rolled over. Our photographer just tweeted these photos from Bartlett Street and Serpentine Drive. The county confirms the truck did lose its load. We're working to learn if anyone was injured in this accident and how long that intersection is going to be closed. All right, well, be prepared if you head outside today. If you've been out already, oh, I have. it is hot <laughs> it and is. I'm still sweating just a little bit right now. <laughs> Temperatures near 90. That's crazy. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Scott Harbaugh tracking when pop-up storms could move in. Maybe they'll bring some cooler temperatures. Cooler? Don't do much for the humidity. <laughs> no. though. Actually, get that humidity to sear. Live storm tracker Doppler 11 radar right now. A couple of showers starting to pop up. And there are some pockets of some more moderate rain, like just coming out of Zelianople right now. That yellow crossing over 19 and 79. A couple of showers up into Mercer, Venango, northern Butler County as well. No thunder or lightning yet. 84 in Pittsburgh, the heat index. 89 degrees. It feels like 89 as you step outside right now. In Pittsburgh, it feels like 90 in Butler. Actual air temperature is going to get to 90 this afternoon. I'm updating Storm Tracker right now to pinpoint which neighborhoods will get a cooling shower or thunderstorm. I'll have that for you in about 15 minutes. All right, Scott, a large tree toppled onto a duplex in South Fayette Township. Channel 11's Lori Hoy spoke with a homeowner who says it narrowly missed his daughter. The homeowner told me that this massive tree had been leaning towards his property for years, and last night it came crashing down, causing a lot of damage. But what's really frightening is it fell into his daughter's room. It happened just before 11:30 last night. This is on Allegheny Avenue in Cuddy, South Fayette Township. The tree pulled off the gutter, damaged the roof, and busted the railing on the front porch. Branches are also blocking the front door. Four people were in the duplex at the time, and luckily, no one was hurt. Homeowner Gary Fink said it sounded like an earthquake, and when the tree hit his daughter's bedroom, it was too close for comfort. It came through the window. Uh, there was a window air conditioner in the room. It probably knocked it five feet into the room. Um, fortunately, it didn't hit anybody in the room. Uh, the damage came straight in. The bed's on the side of the window. Um, she was just pure shock. This tree is actually on the neighbor's property. I'll tell you what she told me tonight at 5. From Cuddy, South Fayette Township, Lori Hoy, Channel 11 News. Penn Hills is cracking down on illegal dumping. They released this surveillance video and they are naming suspects. Channel 11's Mike Holden joins us live with the story new at noon. Mike, good afternoon. 
Peggy, good afternoon to you. Yeah, Penn Hills officials right here in this building behind us, as well as residents spoke out. They're fired up over illegal dumping. They said, stop throwing your garbage in the middle of neighborhoods. Not only is it a health hazard, it is devaluing their properties. Penn Hills Code Enforcement and Police shared this video of alleged polluters caught in the act. You can see the men dumping large amounts of garbage and furniture right in the middle of the day. Code Enforcement has now filed charges against three suspects with more to come. This is all part of the township's new crackdown on pollution. It actually began as a several months long investigation. Throughout different parts of Penn Hills, they will now use cameras in specific unidentified locations to capture incidents just like this. Officials also plan and to increase fines and force offenders to clean up the space. Stop doing it because we're not going to stop. We're going to we're going to continue this program. We're going to continue to identify the people that are doing this. If you're coming into the community to do this, go somewhere else and do it. You heard it right there, and it's the same message from multiple people. Coming up on Channel 11 News at 5, a deep dive into this story, the potential fines in place, and one woman who is furious over tires. Tires just scattered across a yard right across the street from her. You'll hear from her at 5. Reporting live in Penn Hills, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. All right, Mike, in developing details in the deadly stabbing of an 8-year-old boy in Lawrence County, we told you yesterday at noon the suspect was arrested in Youngstown. It was a story that stunned our whole community yesterday and we have not stopped working to get you answers. We pieced together brand new details on the next step. Right now Pennsylvania State Police are working to bring Keith Burley back to Lawrence County. This is video of his arrest in Youngstown. His charges include criminal homicide, aggravated assault, and kidnapping. Police say Burley stabbed eight-year-old Mark Mason to death. He was the son of Burley's girlfriend. He's, they say he was the young boy was stabbed right in front of his younger brother and two other children. Neighbors in Union Township just can't believe what happened. We talked to a woman who tried to help. Crying, shaking, like you know, going crazy, saying I should have grabbed my brother. I should have grabbed my brother. I tried to help him. I tried to call his mom. I tried to call uh, the police. I was nervous. Mm -hmm. That extradition hearing for the suspect is set for tomorrow. And what makes this case even more startling is the fact that the suspect just got out of prison. He was released three months ago after serving 20 years for murder. Now, here's what we found when we looked into his background. Burley pleaded guilty to third-degree murder back in 1999. It was for shooting a man during a robbery in Newcastle. While in prison, Burley was charged with attacking another prisoner. We also found previous firearms and reckless endangerment charges. A lot of people will think that the system failed, but what you also have to look at is how many parolees we have in the state of Pennsylvania and how many do not recidivist, meaning commit any further acts of crime. Our legal analyst, Phil DeLucente, right there, says because the victim is so young in this new case, Burley will likely face the death penalty. And there's a lot still to sort out in this tragedy. You can count on us to keep you up to date. Just keep your WPXI News app close by, and we'll send you updates as they come in. Breaking in just the last five minutes, Channel 11 has learned crews rescued the driver of a truck that rolled down a hillside in Shenley Park. Right now, we're still working to learn how seriously that driver might be injured. At this hour, Serpentine Drive is still closed. County officials say the truck spilled asphalt as it crashed. We're going to continue to follow this throughout this newscast, so keep it right here for updates. The Pittsburgh Catholic Diocese has sent a report to the Vatican about a deacon accused of trying to kiss a young girl. This allegedly happened three years ago, but the investigation was delayed because the suspect, Deacon John Miller, is having health issues. He was affiliated with St. Teresa of Avila and Ross. A representative from the district attorney's, uh, district attorney's office says they received a notification about an allegation regarding Miller in February of 2018. That allegation is that Miller tried to kiss a child three years ago. We're told the diocese immediately notified law enforcement when they learned about the allegation last year and they placed Miller on administrative leave. The diocese says Miller is not allowed now to take part in public ministry or identify himself as a deacon. So this 
afternoon, Britain's ambassador to the United States resigned today, stepping down just days after memos criticizing President Donald Trump were leaked. Meantime, President Trump is speaking out about Labor Secretary Alex Acosta, who's under fire for cutting a plea deal with a politically connected sex offender in 2008. There are calls for Acosta to resign. Our Bafta Imam is in Washington, D.C. with the developing details. Trump is praising the job Alex Acosta is doing as Labor Secretary and says that he feels very badly for him. Meanwhile, top congressional leaders are calling for Acosta to step down or be fired. President Trump has given no indication that will happen. The top Democrat in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, calling on the U.S. Justice Department's Office of Professional Responsibility to turn over their documents involving that 2008 plea deal. In a series of tweets, Secretary Acosta said that the crimes committed by Epstein are horrific, and he's pleased that New York prosecutors are moving forward with a case based on new evidence. He also said the new evidence and testimony offers an important opportunity to more fully bring him to justice. There are two words we need to hear from him. I resign. When he was the U.S. attorney, he had a 53-page indictment with witnesses and victims, over 30 minor children. And what he chose to do was not prosecute. The Labor Department confirmed to us that there will be a news conference with Secretary Acosta later this afternoon to answer questions related to the Epstein case. In Washington, Bofta Imam, Channel 11 News. Well, the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium says its 10-year-old African lion has died. Officials say Razi the lion had suffered for years from seizures. He had a seizure on Sunday and fell in his exhibit, breaking his jaw. Veterinarian zoo staff determined that it wasn't in Razi's best interest to attempt the difficult surgery he would need. A long-term long -term lane closure started today and Sawmill Run, on Sawmill Run Boulevard. Only one southbound lane will be open between the Shaler Street Bridge overpass and the bridge over the Parkway West. Crews will be doing some excavation work out there and restoring the concrete. Work is expected to last until mid-August. The U.S. women's national soccer team is partying in New York City. Fans cheered the World Cup winning team during a ticker tape parade down Broadway this morning. The hashtag One Nation, One Team is trending. During the parade, players chanted equal pay. And on cue, New York's governor signed a new pay equity law today. Andrew Cuomo tweeted the women's soccer team plays the same game that the men's soccer players play, only better. If anything, the men should get paid less. Mom is somewhere that is not equipped to deliver a baby. Medics rushed her pregnant daughter to a local hospital. The problem, the maternity ward, is shut down. Channel 11 looking at the impact of this major change. And a mom arrested for letting her kids sit in a pool. That pool was on top of a moving SUV. The reason the mom said she didn't think it would be an issue. Definitely want to find a pool today on sturdy grounds, but showers and thunderstorms could force you inside. Updated timing coming up. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now.
11 at 11. Accurate details, experienced coverage, trusted weather source. I'm tracking a strong storm moving into Greensburg. All in the first 11 minutes of our newscast. Count on Channel 11 News 11 at 11 tonight. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Welcome back. Police need your help finding the person who robbed this store in Shadyside at gunpoint. This is the Fuel on Convenience Store on Ellsworth Avenue. Police say a worker was mopping the floor Monday night when someone came in and put a gun to his back. It doesn't make me feel good, but I know it's not the first time this has happened here. Yeah, police say the robber demanded cash and grabbed cigarettes before running out the front door. And we're hearing from the first responders who helped save a woman shot in the North for Sales Walmart. You walk into the door not knowing what's on the other side. Yep, that's what they do. First responders were on the scene within minutes to treat the victim of Friday's shooting. She was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Rajane Alston is now charged with attempted homicide in this shooting. Officials are warning people to beware of your surroundings because something like this could happen anywhere. There is concern among expecting mothers in Fayette County one week after a Uniontown hospital closed its maternity ward. The next closest hospital is a 40-minute drive. Channel 11's Kara Sapida spoke to one family who says the added time may have cost a child his life. These are his actual feet. Early Saturday morning, Naye Meyer's daughter, Teshara, went into labor. She was 32 weeks along and called 911 because she was bleeding. Naye was on FaceTime. When the ambulance came, I told them to take her to Ruby. And he looked at me and told me, no, he has to take her to Uniontown so that they could verify she was in labor. EMS Southwest is the ambulance service that responded to her Manalin Township home. Naye says the EMT insisted her daughter be taken to Uniontown Hospital, even though their maternity ward closed. And why would you take her somewhere that is not equipped to deliver a baby? Uniontown Hospital closed their Family Beginnings Birthing Center on June 30th. When Teshara arrived, she said they found the baby's heartbeat but didn't have the equipment to deliver him. But my daughter took the probe and put the probe where it needed to be for the baby's heartbeat. And you heard the baby's I heartbeat. Did. And we all laughed about him sucking his thumb. Teshara was flown by medical helicopter to Ruby Memorial Hospital in Morgantown. She arrived nearly four hours after her initial 911 call. She was screaming that there was no heartbeat and that they were taking her back. For an emergency C section because she was hemorrhaging. Uniontown Hospital tells Channel 11 closing the maternity ward was a difficult decision due to insurance limitations, unfunded government mandates, and difficulty recruiting doctors, and that the move was announced to patients, providers, and area ambulance services to allow for protocols and plans to be developed. We reached out to EMS Southwest for a comment and were told the manager was in a meeting. The baby died at Ruby Memorial Hospital. His grandma mother doesn't want it to happen to another woman. And I pray for each and every pregnant woman that's out here. In Uniontown, Kara Sapida, Channel 11 News. So sad. Well, new details about a massive data breach at Quest Diagnostics. The lab is sending out letters to some customers. That breach involved the company that does the billing for Quest and information, including birth dates and social security numbers, could be at risk. Quest is offering free credit monitoring for patients whose information was accessed. Also, this noon, a Pennsylvania woman is suing Amazon over something she bought from a third party vendor on their site. She says a retractable dog. Dog leash snapped and hit her, causing her to go blind in one eye. As we said, it was sold from a third party vendor, but a federal court said Amazon can still be considered a seller, partly because it doesn't let customers communicate directly with its vendors. A mom taken into custody after police in northern Illinois say she allowed her two daughters to get inside an empty swimming pool. That pool was on top of her SUV. The woman told police she drove across town to have the pool inflated and had the girls ride inside so it wouldn't blow off the car. She's facing a long list of charges, and she could, including child endangerment. Your severe weather, Team 11 forecast.
Live storm tracker, Doppler 11 radar right now. I do have some showers popping up. And notice they're very limited. As I told you this morning, if you're with us on Channel 11 Morning News, once they started to fire, the coverage would not be that great. And looking at some of the dynamics in the atmosphere, we're kind of capping this, these uh, cells off at about 14, 15,000 feet. So not expecting a lot of development as far as thunder and lightning goes the next couple of hours. But we will see these cells pop up. This one right up Route 8, just outside of Hampton Township, up towards Bakerstown. This is heading across 228. Toward Buffalo Township in Saxonburg. Also, I 80 into Venango County, a couple showers, dropping some moderate rain, but again, they're not lasting long. And they're pulse cells. They kind of fire up, they drop some heavy rain for a little bit, and they kind of fire back down. And this will happen off and on throughout the afternoon. Look at the little development coming through. Look at a little wave going through along I 80. That's that shower up near the I 80 corridor. Those cumulus clouds just kind of popping in the last hour to hour and a half. 84 right now in Butler, 78 in Mercer, where they've had a little bit of rain in the last half hour, so it's kept the temperature down just a little bit. Pittsburgh currently 84, Morgantown 85, and Greensburg 84 degrees. Humidity is making it feel closer to 90 this hour. If you want to get the car washed this afternoon, keep in mind just a stray shower or storm. Maybe hose yourself off as well. 90 at 5 o'clock this afternoon, but the heat index is going to feel like 95 degrees at 5 p.m. So again, make sure the pets are not outside today. Kids playing today, plenty of water. Get them some shade and some air conditioning from time to time. Two o'clock this afternoon, those pop-up showers. And again, notice the coverage is not very good. And once the sun starts to go down, kind of dies out. Most of the overnight hours tonight will be quiet. There could be a stray shower or storm, but a very muggy night tonight. 71 overnight tonight in Pittsburgh and in Uniontown. Butler will drop off to 69 degrees. Tomorrow, mid to upper 80s. If we can squeeze in enough sunshine tomorrow, might even do a tick or two better than this during the day tomorrow. Notice tomorrow morning, if you're joining us for Channel 11 Morning News, tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7 a.m., there'll be some rain and declaring to start the morning. Then pop-up showers, several waves coming through. Could be a thunderstorm or two from time to time. 2 p.m., best chance of storms up along I-80. And then by the time we get to around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 5 p.m., thunderstorms coming into Pittsburgh for the evening commute. I think the morning commute tomorrow will be easier than the evening commute. Any of the storms that do pop tomorrow could have some wind gusts in excess of 60 miles per hour, making severe storms a legitimate possibility tomorrow. And they'll pack a punch with the rainfall, too. You get one of the heavier thunderstorms, you could pick up an inch to an inch and a half of rain in as little as 45 minutes. So we also have to watch for some high water issues tomorrow as well. 80 on Friday, maybe a quick morning shower. Rest of the day will be dry. Then Saturday, sunshine, low humidity. Great day, 84. A couple showers and storms on Sunday in 82 degrees. I will be keeping an eye on live storm tracker, Doppler 11 radar, pinpointing where these showers are popping up. So we have a fresh look at it coming up in about 10 minutes. Check this out. It shows blood level donations in our area are extremely low. You can see on a scale from one to five, we're just above a two. Channel 11 is teaming up with Vitalant to host a blood drive this weekend. That drive is being held at the Allegheny Center Alliance Church on the north side this Saturday, July 13th from 8 a.m until 2 p.m. and you can register now if you want to help just sign up on the 11 cares section of WPXI.com. And inspections show too many mistakes are being made by hospice providers. The impact on patients and what investigators want the feds to do now to keep patients safe. And a strong show of support for a high school grad with autism. How his classmates helped him celebrate in a big way.
Seven day forecast now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. And we're back right now with some breaking news. Penguins forward Matt Cullen is hanging up his skates after more than 20 NHL seasons. The 42 year old just announced his retirement. Cullen was a crucial part of the Penguins' back to back cup wins in 2016 and 17. He also won a championship with the Carolina Hurricanes in 2006. A high school graduation ceremony in New York showed a student with autism he's not alone. Jack Higgins and his family wanted to share in this milestone, but the teenager has a severe form of autism and loud noises just overwhelm him. The principal of the school asked that everyone stay quiet so he could walk across the stage to get his diploma. Everyone at the ceremony did keep quiet and his classmates gave him a quiet standing ovation. The principal of the school said this was one of those moments where everyone got to shine. That's for sure. Nice Pretty story. special there, yeah. Oh. Well, Channel 11 learning new information about a case of suspected animal cruelty. Yes, a dog left out in the sweltering heat was found dead. I don't feel like I did anything wrong. Why the dog's owner, as you heard, says she doesn't think she did anything wrong. Our weather can change in an instant. Depend on Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist Stephen Cropper and Severe Weather Team 11, the most experienced forecasters, using the most powerful tools to keep you ahead of every twist and turn. Rain coming in during the morning can without the hype, just the information you need to know, real, clear, accurate, to help you plan your commute and your weekend. Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist Stephen Cropper and Severe Weather Team 11. That's coverage. You Williams show every weekday at 11 right here on channel 11. Well I'm sure you've noticed hot <laughs> and humid again today. Temperatures actually nearing 90 degrees. Yeah it's a scorcher and severe weather team 11 meteorologist Scott Harbaugh is tracking pop-up showers and storms so that makes the humidity worse. I would assume. <laughs> it definitely does because you get that rain to fall so the air cools off a little bit but then as soon as it evaporates back into the air 
Just extra sticky. Live storm tracker Doppler 11 radar right now scanning the skies for you. Notice a couple pockets of some showers. No thunder, no lightning right now. And because the mid levels of the atmosphere are fairly warm, it's going to be hard to really get much in the way of thunderstorms to pop this afternoon. But you got a little bit of one, a little bit of a shower right now near Glade Mills, heading into southern Butler County. And then this little cluster into Venango County that's been popping for the last 15, 20 minutes. Some pockets of some heavy rain from Franklin down to about Slippery Rock. 84 in Pittsburgh right now, 86 in Beaver. Factor in the humidity. Now feels like 91 in Indiana and 90 in Butler. Good pool day today, but keep in mind, thunder roars, head indoors. I'm tracking when severe storms are possible in your neighborhood. So update the forecast coming up in about 15 minutes. Thanks, Scott. A Latrobe man is facing charges after state police say he left two dogs inside a hot car. It happened Sunday at the Westmoreland Mall in Hempfield Township. Police say Alex Mazina Dutro left the dogs in there for more than an hour, and it was 82 degrees out. A new state law allows police and emergency responders to rescue animals that have been left in hot cars. And a woman charged with leaving her dog in the sweltering heat, and sadly, neighbors found the pet outside of Fayette. City home. He didn't survive the heat. Channel 11's Melanie Marsalco spoke with the dog's owner. I don't feel like I did anything wrong. This is Diesel. The pit bull puppy looks happy and healthy in these pictures. He was just over a year old, but was found dead outside in the yard of his Fayette City home. And now his owner is facing criminal charges. We took amazing care of our dog. He, he wasn't just a dog, he was our family pet. You know, we cared about him, we loved him. Leanne Pomplis is charged with felony aggravated animal cruelty. Police say Diesel was left outside for up to seven hours with very little food and little to no water and no shelter. Investigators believe he died from the extreme heat when temperatures were nearing 90 degrees at the end of June. I mean, he was only out for approximately like three hours and I came back out. I had a, you know, gallon of water in my hand to give him more water and I thought he was just laying down. Walked over and he, he was dead. Pomblis told Channel 11 Diesel was cared for and loved. She says she didn't neglect him, but several neighbors told police they often saw him left outside in extreme weather conditions. I was coming out often to give him water, and I, I don't, I don't still to this day, I don't know what happened because the autopsy's not back. Yeah. Well, Melanie spoke with the humane officer involved in this case. She said she couldn't say much about the case, but said the animal autopsy will take some time because there's a lot of different tests being done. A Pittsburgh police officer is recovering after a cruiser, cruiser crash in Homewood. The vehicle was rear-ended on Frankstown Avenue by a big truck yesterday. The officer was taken to the hospital. Uh, we were told his injuries weren't serious, but we don't have any solid word on how he's doing today. Local police are getting extra training on how to deal with uncooperative suspects. Pitcairn Police hosted the training session Tuesday for officers from three different counties. The de-escalation training focuses on what officers should do and say before they try or, or before they decide to pull out their guns. Too many times we train these officers on the use of force and how to use pepper spray, tasers, uh, even of firearms, but we lack communication. Two instructors from the International Law Enforcement Association led the session. Well, Governor Tom Wolf says the state is working to issue a bond to help counties pay for new voting systems without or with paper trails. Under the plan, the state would fund up to $90 million to reimburse counties for 60% of the cost. Just last week, the governor vetoed a bill to help pay for the machines because it included a provision to eliminate straight party voting. Disturbing information about the care provided at hospices here in Pennsylvania. Hundreds of providers have been cited for major violations impacting patients. Channel 11's Justin Gray has more on the mistakes that are being made. A wound left untreated on an Alzheimer's patient for so long that a leg became gangrenous and had to be amputated. Maggots found around another patient's feeding tube. Both patients 
failed by hospice providers. That end of life care paid for by Medicare. These examples are heartbreaking. This is one of the most vulnerable populations, terminally ill patients in their final days. The Health and Human Services Inspector General found these were not isolated incidents. The federal investigators say that 80% of hospices were found during on site inspections to have at least one key deficiency. These aren't just technical deficiencies, they can really affect patients. The IG labeled 20%, or about 300 hospices, as poor performers with more serious deficiencies. In some cases, we found that the hospice care actually harmed the patients. In Pennsylvania, 75% of the 205 hospices surveyed had at least one deficiency. So which hospices are the poor performers? Right now, much of that information is not being shared with the public, and some of it, by current law, can't be. The inspector general is recommending Medicare set up a more transparent system in which you can easily search a website for any violations at hospice providers, just like you can with nursing homes. And this noon, we're getting a new look at the refinery Shell Oil Company is building in Beaver County. The plant is being built in Potter Township and is expected to open sometime after 2020. These pictures here from our partners at the Pittsburgh Business Times show the plant from above as crews work to get things ready. Shell says as of last week, there are more than 5,000 workers at the site. And several local communities will get a big boost from fracking. The State Public Utility Commission says Washington and Greene Counties will get a combined $14.4 million, and Fayette County will get $1.2 million. The money comes from impact fees paid by drillers. As part of Act 13, the money can be used for things like roads, infrastructure projects, and affordable housing. An eight-year-old has a lot to celebrate after completing her final cancer treatment on her birthday. She's a warrior, and I'm just so proud of her to get through this. Amazing story here. The gift her daughter is giving to kids battling cancer. And traffic updated every 10 minutes on Channel 11 Morning News.
little girl has a whole lot to celebrate this week after battling a rare type of cancer for more than a year. She's finally cancer free. Yeah, amazing story. She just rang in her eighth birthday. All that excitement isn't stopping her, though, from giving back to others. Reporter Lauren Coronado was there for the special celebration. Keep smiles for Zoe, okay? It's more than just a birthday party for this eight-year-old. I dreamed about this day, and for it to finally be here is, is just a dream come true for our entire family. Sheena Figueroa says her daughter Zoe was given a 50% chance to live. She battled stage four neuroblastoma, a rare and aggressive cancer, for 16 months before beating the disease. She's a warrior, and I'm just so proud of her to get through this. On Sunday, she turned eight and had her last treatment. Her one birthday wish? Where are all the presents going to? Oh. More cancer kids? Yeah, more cancer kids. Donating her presents to foundations and hospitals that have helped her through recovery, like the Healing Little Heroes Foundation. That is so wonderful, you know, uh, for an eight-year-old to be so Hi. mature to donate all her gifts to other kids at various hospitals. Making this birthday celebration one to remember. I'm so happy by Zoe turning eight. And um, this was her dream come true. That's a sweet story. They grow up so fast when they go through something like yeah, that, which is they explains become little the adults. giving this. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are uh, still a lot of days of summer left, but now is the time, apparently, yeah. to start back to school shopping. I think it's too early, personally. I agree. Well, you don't have to leave home to do this, though, so that's the good news. Consumer advisor Clark Howard shows us one website with some big savings. I saw one national chain stocking shelves yesterday. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah, we got some summertime thunderstorms this afternoon, tracking which areas are most likely to get wet. WPXI now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI now. Always on when you want the latest on... at 11, 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News now brings you the seven-day forecast on your screen all the time. During all of our weather reports, you'll see the forecast for the next seven days where you live. Watch Severe Weather Team 11 seven-day forecast on Channel 11 News every day. AT&T says it will start blocking robocalls following an FCC ruling last month. The agency says carriers can block unwanted calls by default. 
without requiring customers to opt in. AT&T will roll out its call protect service for new customers now and in coming months for existing customers. Another streaming platform is coming next year. HBO Max will offer exclusive original programming as well as Warner Media's vast portfolio of brands and libraries. HBO Max will have the rights to all episodes of Friends, which will be leaving Netflix at the beginning of 2020 in the U.S. It's scheduled to debut in the spring. Well, back to school is probably not what any of us want to think about just yet, but consumer advice Advisor Clark Howard says to save money and avoid stress later, you should stock up on supplies now. Lindsay Upchurch says shopping for supplies has changed quite a bit since she was in school. I remember going back with a few pencils, um, Trapper Keeper. The list is long, but thanks to an online supply program, she won't be standing in line this year. Many schools offer the school supply boxes, which contain everything your child will need for the year. Most times they're delivered right to the school. Initially, I thought it was a ripoff. But after missing the deadline one year, her mind was made up. I can remember rushing around to multiple stores. It's like Black Friday. We compared prices for ourselves and found the box offered at Lindsay School was a little over $30 cheaper than buying everything separately. If you miss the deadline this year at your school, Call and ask your school if they've got extras. A lot of times, they will. I'm Clark Howard. Well, we could all learn something from a five-year-old boy in Connecticut. He has started a trash cleanup crew. The boy is on a mission to save our ocean wildlife, one piece of trash at a time. The movement began after he saw a video of a shark caught up in a net. Well, that inspired him and his mom to start a Facebook page to recruit people to pick up trash in New London. All the trash could get on go in the air and then it ends up at the beach and then and then the waves come and take it in the ocean then the fish and the animals die. Well, that's basically what can happen, right? Levi's cleanup crew now has about 300 followers on Facebook. He's got a lot of helpers out there as well and a group of volunteers who pick up the trash with him every Tuesday morning around the city. Good stuff. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. A garden variety shower is starting to pop up on Storm Tracker Doppler 11 radar. There's the live sweep through Washington, Greene County. A couple of little cells. We're along I 79 Greene County. A pretty good cell now southwest of Morgantown. Look into Allegheny County. Have one down near McKeesport. Also one that's dying out near Cunningham in southern Butler County. This is exactly what I was talking about last half hour. These things kind of flare up. They go about 15, 20 minutes. They kind of pulse back down. The exception to this has been up in Venango County where now Franklin picking up some moderate rain that it continues down through Clintonville into northern uh, Butler County near the Monito School District right now picking up some moderate rain. We'll see these pop-up showers this afternoon. Notice coverage is not impressive at all and once we get past 7 o'clock and the sun starts to go down we lose the energy, the dynamics, and they start to die out. They're diurnal showers and thunderstorms. And again, I don't think thunderstorms are going to be overly prevalent this afternoon just because the atmosphere right now kind of capped. If we break that cap this afternoon, which means if the warm levels in the mid part of the troposphere start to dissolve apart, then we'll start to see a little more thunderstorm activity. Hot is going to be the main story this afternoon. 90 for the high temperature with a couple thunderstorms possible this afternoon. Tonight, Warm and muggy, a shower or storm in a spot or two, but most of the night, just that really heavy, sticky feel. 71 for the overnight low. And then tomorrow, showers and storms more likely. Severe storms are possible. It is not going to rain all day tomorrow, but there will be several clusters of rain throughout the day. Even at 6 30 tomorrow morning, could be a shower, clap of thunder up near Clary. And then notice these waves start to develop. 10 a.m., showers running from Jefferson County southwest through Washington County. And this actually explodes a little bit to the east, so it could be around a strong thunderstorms around noon, places like Westmoreland, Fayette County, Indiana County. Notice at 2 o'clock, here comes the next round into Butler County by 5 p.m. into the Pittsburgh area. I do think the evening commute tomorrow could be touch and go with the potential for strong to severe thunderstorms during the afternoon into the early evening. Notice by 7.30, they're pretty much gone. By first thing Friday, we're just left over with some clouds. Some of the storms tomorrow could be severe. Damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and large hail would be the two primary concerns. But keep in mind, 
could get some pockets of heavy rain. And if you get repeated rounds of thunderstorms with heavy rain, that could lead to some localized flooding. Five day forecast with your weekend always in view. Much better Friday, 80 for the high temperature, just a stray morning shower. Rest of the day will be dry and less humid. Saturday, sunshine looks really good. Not a humid day at all on Saturday, 84 for the high. Humidity comes back a bit on Sunday. As to the chance of showers and thunderstorms, just a couple though, at a high temperature of 82 degrees. Well, it's something most people take for granted. The local group helping to make sure bike rides are available to everyone. Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. Uber has launched a helicopter service. Uber Copter takes riders between, riders between Lower Manhattan to JFK Airport. That's a drive that could take two hours, but it's just 30 minutes by air. A single ride costs about 200 bucks. Now imagine being able to go from Pittsburgh to Chicago in that same amount of time. We first told you about the Hyperloop 1 last year when Target 11 went to the test track in Las Vegas. Well, now we're finding out what needs to happen in order to make it a reality and how soon it could happen. Target 11 investigator Rick Earl working to bring you that story tonight at 5. And a new program is helping everyone get out and enjoy a bike ride. Joy Riders launched last night on the Great Allegheny Passage Trail in Bell Vernon. Special bicycles allow people with limited mobility to ride along. We're out here on the trail and you feel the sun on your face and the wind and it, some people don't get the chance to do that. And so we wanted to give people the opportunity to do that. And you can sign up for a ride through the Joy Riders Facebook page. A new Barbie is out, and Mattel is hoping the doll encourages kids to consider out of this world careers. The doll is the likeness of Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. Mattel made it in partnership with the European Space Agency. Cristoforetti, who was the first Italian woman in space, says she hopes the collaboration will help young girls and boys to dream about their future without any limits. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that is all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5 o'clock. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy.